Hello, everybody. I'm Scott Volk, and welcome to another episode of Real Estate Matters. Today, we are going to veer into territory we have not done, at least recently, and we're going to give you some general investment ideas uh, based on the current political economic climate, things you might want to look at if you are a real estate investor. I'm joined once again by my good friend and sidekick, Lance Growth. Hello, Lance. Good to be here. Yes. <laughs> I think I have a homing device on you. I just bring you in whenever I need you. All right. In our last show, you yeah. mentioned that we, we were talking about how the market is crazy. Everything's going multiple offers. Prices are just going places where we, we wouldn't, have no, wouldn't have thought of six months ago. Yeah. But you, I asked you what could end it, and you said most likely it's going to be something the government does because they're randomly, or not randomly, but, but they've, they're a lot more powerful than they used to be. Excessively. Excessively. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to be subtle there, okay? <laughs> Just in case somebody's listening who you didn't want to hear. Um, what, we talked about the fact that it doesn't look like the 1031 is going to, 1031 exchange is going to be threatened short term. Thank God. Yes. You have a job for a little while. Exactly. Um, what about taxation? What about minimum wage? What about, do any of those things cause your investors pause? Is there anything? Yeah. Well, one, you would know more about it in terms of uh, minimum wage, but it is a bit of an issue for investors. It's just a simple thing. You know, in terms of occupancy, uh, investors are always worried about are there tenants able to pay their rent. So in terms of, uh, yeah, minimum wage, I know you know more about the topic than I do, but. That was actually kind of where I was, um, I, I was hoping you'd bring that up, actually. Thank you. <laughs> um, I had an investor call me, so I can't claim any responsibility for this idea. Investor called me who, um, back in 2011, I helped him procure 11 units yeah. in San Diego. And in 2020, we got rid of them, all of them. And he moved, the money up to, moved his money up to Seattle. He sent me an email about two weeks ago. He goes, Scott, what about the minimum wage? I'm like, what do you mean? And his point was, in Seattle, they're doing the same thing we're doing in California. Yeah. Creeping the minimum wage up. But they're coming from a lower level in Seattle, in Washington, than we were in California. California was already higher than Seattle was. And he says, what's happening is it's the law of what we would call the law of unintended consequences. Yeah. The, the goal of minimum wage from a politician standpoint, besides to get reelected, is, is supposed to be to raise the, the, the poverty, raise the poor people up, give them yeah. more money to spend. Well, what's happening is every, every dollar an hour you raise the minimum wage puts about $150 after Social Security, Medicare in somebody's pocket. Yeah. So if you raise the minimum wage four bucks an hour over a couple of years, you're putting $600 in somebody's pocket. But you're not giving them the tools to use that money. Yeah. You're not educating those people on how can you invest it, how can you pay down your credit cards, how can you, you know, buy a car cash instead of having a big payment. And their landlord knows that they've got this extra money. Or they're in a, a, a neighborhood where you don't want to raise your kids, so they look for better housing. What they're finding in Seattle is that money's going into housing. So there's no rent, there, there's limited rent control there, so the rents have gone up. Yeah. So what's happening is you're giving Mr. McDonald's worker an extra $4 an hour over a couple of years. Maybe his partner is getting an extra $4 an hour. Now all of a sudden you've got $8 an hour going into a family that, that works out to $1,200 a month. Yeah. They're like, let's find better housing. Which is good if that happens for one or two people. Yeah. But if it, everybody's looking for, general, for better housing, it's, it's, what it's doing is it's raising the rents enough so that when he sold here, the buyer of his property has got a 4% 4, 4 cap rate. Yeah. He picked up an 8.5% cap rate, more than doubled his return with this just moving the money over, 1031 exchange. Um, but his, his thought was, and I'm, I'm going to take it a step farther, but his, his thought was the Democrats on the far left. Now, mm -hmm. this is not the main, main mainstream Democrats, but on the far left, they're talking about a $15 minimum wage. Now, that may have just been election. You know, I want to get elected, yeah. I'll give you 15 bucks. But if it happens, who does it affect? And most people think, well, it's just going to give better quality of life for people. But what, what the unintended consequence is that money's going to flow into housing. Yeah. Right? And the cost of housing in those in areas are going to go up. So I've got two ideas for you. The first is, let's be conservative. We don't know that the 
$15 an hour national wage is going to pass. Okay, but we know there are states that do have minimum wage. Let's look at those states that are going up. And furthermore, let's look at states that don't have rent control. Right. So there's two situations with rent control. Well, there can be three tiers. Either it's allowed and you have it, California, New York, you know, all, all your really blue states have it. You have states that where it's allowed, but they don't have it. And then you have states where it's actually not allowed. So there are actually several states in the union where if the city wants to have rent control, they're not allowed to do it because the state has outlawed it. Yeah. Okay. So I did some research just for today. You did homework. I did homework. Yes. Want to run these by you and just kind of get your impression. These yeah. are states that have active increases in rent control right now. And it is illegal for any city. Oh, I'm sorry. These are states. Cut that, Carlos. It's illegal. <laughs> these are states. <laughs> okay. These are states that have active minimum wage increases going on. Yep. Either it's a one time in 2021 or it's going to be stepped as like California, we're going to 14 and 15. But also, the state have passed a law that cities and counties cannot do rent control. So for now, you've got no chance of rent control but you have incomes rising for the people who are poor, which is mm -hmm. going to result in higher rents, appreciation on rental properties. Mm -hmm. And by rental properties, I, I'm thinking here small investor. I'm, I'm not thinking apartment buildings. Apartment buildings are going to definitely see an advantage, but that's, that's, that's your REIT. That, those are your big guys. The guys I talk to on a daily basis, at least, they're going to buy fourplexes. Yeah. Okay, we're looking at one, two, three, four units. Where are those going to appreciate? Where can, where can somebody who's in San Diego, maybe they've got a second home, you know, downtown, and they want to get rid of it or in Mission Valley or something like that, and they want to invest somewhere else. These are, this is kind of the ideas for them. I was shocked at how many states there are. So Arkansas is going from $10 to $11 an hour, okay? No rent control allowed in Arkansas. Connecticut's going from 12 to 13 and Florida. This is my home state right there. There you go. There you go. Call your, call, call your buddies up and say, hey, <laughs> find me a place. Um, we're at the end of time. Thank you very much for watching. Um, I hope I made, made your, your brain spin a little bit. If you're looking for investments, if you'd like to talk about this, feel free to give us a call. Um, Lance can handle any 1031 exchanges you have. His information will be on the screen. Um, I'd love to help you locate a good agent in an area where you're looking. And of course, I love to help you handle your San Diego real estate.